in today's video, I'm going to rate the best dungeon games on Roblox on a 1 to 10 based on end game, progression, updates, originality, pay to win, and visuals. Also, be sure to join the Discord if these are your type of games. First off is Fabled Legacy. Progression in this game is great. It feels very well paced. By the time I'm getting bored of playing one dungeon, it really feels like I'm now hitting the next dungeon. It's close for me to optimal, like a 9 out of 10. Now, with Endgame, I think this is a little weaker. It's got the World Raid thingies, but honestly, that's just not my style of Endgame. You're going to see it's not my style when I do Anime Dimensions as well. On this part, I give it like a 4 out of 10. Originality also kind of lacks there because it does kind of walk in the footsteps of Dungeon Quest. And because of that, I have to give it like a 3 out of 10 in that category just because it it is kind of doing what Dungeon Quest already did. Now, I think it is the best one that's come after Dungeon Quest that is very similar to Dungeon Quest, but obviously can't give it a super high score. For pay to win, outside of the standard stuff, it's not really pay to win at all i mean there are still like elements of pay to win like all the standard stuff and the boosts and, and things like that but it's really nothing crazy honestly i think probably like a seven out of ten i think visuals for this game is also solid not too much to talk about here honestly the game just kind of looks pretty but not insane like seven out of ten for updates it's it updates rather frequently and there are events like every whenever there's like holidays and stuff and new dungeons drop pretty often especially considering the game's only been out a year dungeons drop with good frequency but it's not a massive dev team i don't believe for this i'd probably give it like a 6.5 out of 10. next is elemental dungeons progression in this game is kind of all over the place and there are two times xp which is gonna hurt it no matter what and it makes is and especially towards later dungeons like angel sanctuary it makes it feel like as you need these two times xps by the time you're you're getting there it isn't always slow to level it just feels all over the place you'll spend five minutes in like one dungeon and then the next five days and then like you know in another dungeon like atlantis it's weird i'd give ed probably like a six out of ten here next is endgame which is mostly raids and they're buffed up versions of the regular dungeons with more players in them it's not bad i do heavily prefer it towards like world raids or like bosses and raids that just have like infinite health and you just have to try to output damage or whatever i do kind of like ed's style of raids a little more but there's still not a crazy amount to do at the end game so i'm gonna give it like a 6.5 out of 10. originality has to be where ed shines probably the most compared to other dungeon games unlike a lot of these other dungeon games that kind of follow dungeon quests elemental dungeons i feel like more does its own thing i'd give it like a 9 out of 10 here pay to win is worse here than fabled legacy for sure as you can buy elements directly to help you in the game for this i'd say it's probably a 5 out of 10 i can't really say it's like crazy because you can't buy like some of the best elements in the game or some of the rarest like kit and phantom but you can buy like krampus reaper and galaxy which are all really good uh, i would say this used to be like an 8.5 out of 10 though but then they did start to add some pay to win mechanics visual visuals are solid dungeons don't look bad and elements are pretty visually well done here this is like an 8.5 out of 10 in my opinion next is updates and it's not that the delays are crazy slow they are always delayed like updates will get delayed week after week after week and there was one point where they went like three months with like no words from the developers really at all this is probably ed's worst category i feel like i feel like with these delays and stuff ed's like the mega me of dungeon games like potential but not realized potential i'd give it like a three out of ten for updates next is dungeon quest progression in this game i'm just gonna get out of the way right now it's like a two out of ten or maybe like a three out of ten yeah i'll say three out of ten it's so slow especially when you start hitting like mid game like around 130 ish and if you don't have two times xps it just feels impossible to level so yeah that's just two out of ten next is pay to win it's got all the standard stuff again and like xp boost cosmetics the double loot the IP, like all that stuff i would say i'd put it similar to what i did fabled legacy at about an eight Endgame is solid here, in my opinion. Not too much to say. Usually, I think this is where this game shines the most. And the newest dungeons are, are usually high quality and fairly hard. I would give the end game for Dungeon Quest like an 8 out of 10. Updates is probably like... I'm torn on updates a little bit because where the game is now backed by a new group and all that, new owners, there's been so many changes to like every facet of the game, like reworked dungeons and stuff. But dungeons, are they still kind of come out super slow. I don't think that matters too much i would give updates for this like an 8.5 out of 10 for visuals in the past i would have said like a 6 out of 10 now i'd say maybe closer to an 8 out of 10 i think a lot of your later dungeons like mid to later dungeons all look 
really good. Obviously, the game isn't going to blow you away with like, you know, VFX or whatever like that. But I think it's pretty solid. I would give it like a 7 out of 10. Maybe 7.5. 7.5 out of 10. Originally, originality for this game is a 10 out of 10. This game is the standards that many others just try to mimic but can't. Next is Anime Dimension. I'm going to spice some negativity out there right out of the gate with pay to win. It's pretty bad here. When I played, there was so many predatory mechanics in the game to push players to spending just more Robux. Honestly, I give this probably... It's worse than ED at like a 3 or 4 out of 10. Next is Endgame. And I really just dislike the raids here. I, I really just hate hitting at a boss for 10 minutes to do damage. For me, it isn't really fun. It's not challenging. And to me, it just doesn't feel like what endgame content should be. Again, I give this like a 3.5 out of 10. I really just don't like that, this, that style of endgame. But it might be for other people, so take it with a grain of salt. Thankfully, I think it's mostly up for here, though. Visuals are really solid here. Characters are well done. Game looks nice. Abilities look cool. Honestly, 9 out of 10. Not too much to say about it. I think they do a lot of times land like the how the abilities and stuff. Progression, I felt was also really nice in this game. Towards the end of it, it gets a little iffy and there are two times xps but it's not terrible here honestly like an 8.5 i enjoy most of the time i was playing through the game and i think it's really hooked to just start playing it and progressing at, from going from like level zero to max it's just it's pretty fun in my opinion i just think it then drops off when you hit end game but the progression here is great and i think progression holds the most weight so there's that originality though isn't very high it's a, it's an anime game so obviously it's just adopting characters that have already been adopted a thousand times before honestly that's like a two out of ten and it really can't be any higher honestly i would almost want to say it's like a one out of ten because it really just adopts stuff that's already there you know so how can i possibly give it a score higher but i'm going to give it a two out of ten and lastly is updates it's consistently updated it's mostly new characters that get added but it's pretty good here i'd give it like a seven out of ten next is anime dungeon fighters and i won't lie i haven't played this one since making my last hate video on it here's my mate and here's my character literally like the same level i was at at that point months ago so take what i say with a grain of salt on this one if you'd like but this game is trash progression is honestly like a one out of ten since it's progression entirely is just you auto fighting it's incredibly boring to actually play the game without auto fight and since it's always there you're pretty much always going to use it as well end game though i didn't get that far never will get that far never want to get that far so i won't even give my opinion on it updates though seem to be pretty solid i mean they got ores now pvp and a new place from the last time i'd play i'd probably give it like a 7 out of 10 just from what i can see it might be a little higher though but it does seem like they do update this game quite a bit originality it's very similar to anime dimension since it adapts a lot of stuff it's not going to be super high i will be fair though and say that it does have many aspects that are at least more unique than ad like it has like its guns and its swords and then like the abilities attached to them which are i think their own things so I would actually give this like a 4 out of 10. Maybe you could argue it up to a 5 out of 10 though. Pay to win. There's a lot of places to spend money. And spending money here does actually, I think, give you assistance in the game. Like you can spend money for like gems and stuff like that to buy stuff. But I don't think it's like super egregious or like you pay for this, you're the best stuff in the game type of thing. I'm not going to rate it though as I feel I have a knowledge barrier here. I just did want to mention it. Lastly is visuals and it's not anything crazy. The ability is like meh from what I've seen so far. Just from like the light and the guns that I've used. It just kind of looks meh, same with the other abilities, and the maps are kind of meh as well. I'd get, probably just give this like a 5 out of 10 for visuals, but again, I think this game is trash, mostly because of its auto fight mechanic. Next off is World Zero, and for progression, I give World Zero like a 9.5 out of 10. It's similar to Fabled, it feels as you're pacing through content very fast and very smoothly, and as a first time player like a year ago or whatever, I never remember myself getting bored of it at all. I just binged it until I was done. And I don't even think I binged it for that long. Whereas like a lot of other games, you're going to have to play them for so long to reach max. And that, I really just don't like that. But in World Zero, it's not like that at all. Next is Endgame. And I think it's solid here as well. I like most of what it has to offer. This is like an 8, 8, I'd say like an 8.5 out of 10 for me. Updates for here isn't too much to say. It's backed by a fairly large group and it is updated frequently for an older game. Probably like a 7.5 out of 10 originality is also going to be pretty high up there since it really doesn't copy dungeon quest and is also one of those just og dungeon games that kind of you know kind of i guess paved the way a little bit i'd say it's like a 9 out of 10 here 
pay to win is here for sure though like finally i can say that like skipping the end game is kind of an egregious way to pay to win on top of having all the usual pay to win stuff that other games have as well this is probably going to be the lowest score at like four out of ten and lastly is its visuals i don't really think it shines here or is exceptionally bad it's just uh, kind of close to me i'd put it also at like a four out of ten and that's the most popular dungeon games rated individually now just because one score total is lower doesn't mean it's necessarily worse and that's why i want to break it down into individual categories because certain things i think can hold more weight like progression and end game and in different people's eyes maybe it's other stuff personally for me that's what i prioritize most and generally games where progressing feels nice i tend to just play more even if the score total is lower but i hope you liked the video thanks for watching yeah see you